Hello there Libras, welcome to your reading. When I was shuffling out this this spread, uh, what was really interesting is uh, the cards fell out two at a time. So these two fell out, and then these two fell out, and then these two, these two, and then those two. So they, they kept falling out two at a time. And when that happened, I couldn't really focus to get like an image for you. I couldn't focus to to get like an image for you so as we go through this reading whatever images comes up then I will relay it for you okay but the two indicates to me that compromise that partnership that um, that sense of duality as well indecisiveness you know um, looking at ourselves in relations to another person that's what it feels like to me and um, those are like, I feel like the, the stereotypical Libran traits, okay? Where it's like, you see yourself in relations to another person. You see yourself as part of a whole. And you are at your best when you have another person by your side to bounce ideas off of. In order to feel secure, in order to feel like you are complete, okay? So it's very reminiscent of like Pisces, um, Gemini, and... Librans to like that that energy is very reminiscent of Pisces or Gemini so you might have those people very very prominent in your environment or you might have those placement very prominent in your chart in your natal astrology chart because you there there's a sense here about you know wanting a partner needing a partner or needing just somebody by your side to bounce ideas off of to come to for advice or to you know just physically have by your side so what I feel here is uh, the way this spread is coming up. There's a need for us to seek people. If we're going to seek people anyways, if we're so relationship focused or if we're so other focused, it is very, very important for us to seek people who are very different from us. Okay. And, um, I honestly believe that, you know, the one of our lessons in life is to learn as many things as possible and to learn as many things as early on as possible. When your mind is young, it is very uh, agile. It is very uh, regenerative. You can make connections. You can cram in as much as you can. You can pull a lot of all-nighters and retain information really, really well when you're young, okay? And when you're young and you find and you purposely put yourself in many, many different work environment. Okay. So like a year, do this another year, try to do that, try to shift jobs as many times as possible so that you get to know what environment is more suitable for you so that you get to meet people and that you get to, you know, put yourself in, um, a myriad of situations and sit and learning environments so that you're exposed to as many things different experiences different circumstances different belief system as possible and so it is really important for us to you know steer away from that sense of safety by familiar by surrounding ourselves with people that are so like us that we don't grow so aim for more partners or relationships or people that really challenge you that really sometimes oppose you that will really um, bring out that sense in you where you're just like I disagree and here is my perspective or my take on the situation putting yourself in those situations will kind of encourage you or force you to defend your beliefs and through the, the process of exchanging our belief system with another, we might realize, wow, my, my belief is not very solid and secure to begin with. Maybe I need to adopt a new belief system. And through the process of defending our beliefs, it strengthens our resolves about our belief system. It makes us feel, if we can defend something, it makes us feel a little bit more sure about ourselves. It makes us feel a little bit more sure about what it is that we truly, truly, truly believe in. So, you know, a life of adversity builds character. So I definitely feel like, you know, wanting to surround yourself with new people, different people, and not only different and new, but people that 
see things from a different perspective. People that are uh, that that challenge us to, you know, not so much like conflictual situations, but people that will really challenge us. People that might not have the same belief system. People that will continuously um, ask us these important questions so that we can refine our thoughts, refine our thinking. Um, I'm also sensing as well dealing with different people and pushing yourself out of that social comfort zone will allow you to fill in the knowledge gap so a lot of the times you know we believe in in in, in one thing okay and we will cherry pick the examples that we use or you know the information that's available out there to corroborate that one thing that we believe in is cherry picking and most of us you know fall into that fallacy and so this message for many of you i feel it is about doing the necessary research in order to fill in the knowledge gap doing it the right way doing it the proper way not just cherry picking data or information and then glossing over the information that you know runs con counter or is contrary to what it is that we're trying to persuade people on what it is that we're trying to tell other people so i feel here the need to be very very fair and see things from both perspective for you guys so that you can refine your thinking so that you can fill in the knowledge gap so that you can understand okay Maybe I was wrong with this belief and I need to switch over. But before I switch over and abandon my previous belief system, I need to do my research to make sure I know where I stand. And the reason I harped on this was because, you know, the, the t cards fell out two at a time. And also, there's a huge thing here about, I, I'm seeing a lot of students, a lot of students um, you're going through some type of a training situation and I feel almost like some of you and not all of you but some of you you're just like I already know this why are they giving this us training on this why am I forced to sit through this why am I being taught something I already know and I almost feel like that mentality you know will back will, will, will be to your detriment Okay, um, so I feel like there's a way that you're doing something and that's like your go-to process. Like you've already got it down and you're just like, I already know what I'm doing. All these people, they're wasting my time. They don't know what they're talking about. But it is something that you have to do. So some of you, for example, you're going to school to get a degree. And uh, a lot of people nowadays, you know, in order to land a very good job, we need a combination of uh, experience, real life work experience, as well as degrees and diplomas. And I feel like for some of you, you're going through the motions. You already have the work experience. You already have the hands-on work experience. You already know what you're doing. And yet you're forced to go through some type of training or you're forced to finish school in order to get that diploma so that you're more employable. And I feel like it's very, very frustrating for you. But I would say, take that paradigm shift because you're there for a reason you already probably paying tuition you're even if the training is provided for free it could be you know led by an uh, by your company you're already going to have to be there make the most of it and whatever we whenever we enter an environment any type of environment whatever we put in is whatever we're going to get out so if you're very hands off and very detached and, you know, keep people at arm's length and, and already come in with the attitude that I already know this, then you're going to get very, very little out of it. Okay, so I feel that there are things right now where you have to fill in the knowledge gap. You might not have all the information and the people around you might have information that you need okay so for example if you're a financial planner and you're forced to you know um, as a part of your coursework as a part of renewing your license you're forced to attend some financial 
planning uh, workshops just to, you know, get those credits, just to renew your license. And you're coming in there and you're just like, I already know all of this stuff. And the people that are teaching it lack the experience. They lack the articulateness that you guys love as an air sign. Um, so what I feel is maybe you're not there to learn financial management. You're just there to renew your license. Maybe you're there to, you know, assist the other people around you that might not grasp the concept as well. Maybe you're there to help them go through that process. Or maybe you're there to network and socialize. There's a reason for you to be somewhere. And so you have to make the most of it, okay? See things from the other side. And uh, there is a thing here about, I'm seeing a lot of students once again, and there's some information that you feel you're missing, some piece, some very, very vital piece of information. And I see some of you obsessively reading up on it, doing a, a lot of research. And you're just like, wait a minute, this research is not available out there. Maybe that's the line of inquiry that would be really, really good for a dissertation, for a master's thesis, for like um, even a senior thesis, for those of you uh, who are undergrad, or even for high school, like a senior thesis. If there is a question, a very pertinent research question that you feel the literature doesn't exist out there as it relates to this one question, maybe that's something you can explore so you can chart new territory so that you can, you know, maybe your thesis or your master's thesis should be, why isn't there literature on this really, really pertinent topic, okay? Filling in the knowledge gap. And that's what I'm seeing happening here for the next two weeks, which is really weird because um, there are a lot of students here, but the next two weeks would also be the holiday season. So I don't know what that's about, but I feel like some of you might be working on some type of a big project and you're, you feel you might not even be a student. You might just be working and there's a large project that you're trying to finish up or you're working on and you feel like some pertinent information is missing and you're not able to find the data, you're not able to find the, the, the information. And so you might be spinning your wheels a little bit, okay? Maybe that is an area worth exploring for some of you. Um, aside from that, what I do feel is I have somebody in your environment, like um, this is somebody that is younger than you and I feel like they're very, very interested in you. And they try to ask you, like, hey, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? But it seems like you guys are deferring to work or deferring to your hobbies um, in order not to socialize. So this is like uh, some of you, classmate, others a friend, others a colleague. And then for others, it's somebody you're in some type of a... You're, I, I see like, you know, uh, them having, they have reached out many, many times. You want to do this? Do you want to do that? And you're like, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. And um, you are not looking at them, I feel, when you're saying this. And I feel like they have initiated many, many, you know, they, they have asked you many times, you want to do this? You want to do that? And the answer was always no. And I see somebody who's just like, I can't embarrass myself anymore. I can't just keep doing this because they keep rejecting me. And I almost feel like if this person told you, hey, I really like you. You want to get coffee with me? Your answer would be different. However, the way that they come in, it's very, it's very nonchalant. It's very unemotional. And that's because, you know, they feel a little bit jilted by you and they feel feel almost like you're so absorbed in your work or, you know, there are so many other things that you're working on so that you're not really prioritizing them. So somebody in your life is feeling a little bit neglected and they've asked you to do things so many times that they've given up on trying. They've given up on trying. They've asked you to do things so many times They've given up on trying and as I say that I have to repeat that because I feel like for some of you it's a crush asking you let's get coffee let's go see a movie let's 
you know, play something. Let's play sports. Let's um, go for a walk. And your answer has always been no. And I feel like they are cowering because they're embarrassed. They're, they're embarrassed of the rejection. And also, when somebody reaches out and we don't, you know, look them in the eyes and we just tell them, no, I'm busy, it hurts. It hurts on a very, very deep level. And I feel they're hurt and I feel they are, they still look at you. If you made a move on them, they, they would be so happy. They still look at you. They're still interested, but it's almost like, I have to, you know, look elsewhere because this person is probably not interested in me. This Libra is probably not interested in me. Um, and I'm too embarrassed right now because they've turned me down so many times and I can't put myself through another rejection, okay? So you've got people here that are really eyeing you, Libras, and they see that you're a hard worker. They see that you are somebody who's... Um, Who's very serious like your your energy is coming in very serious for the next two weeks and they're trying to get your attention and there's a lot of fun to be had but you you know you're you're busy some of you are working overtime and uh, some of you are just you know trying to make extra income so you might be dabbling in uh, a lot of different activities in order to make ends meet and hence I see a lot of students but either way that's what I'm sensing and um, I mentioned something earlier and then I got sidetracked. Um, the, the, the phrase that I repeated earlier, and I apologize, I'm a little bit scattered in your reading. The phrase that I mentioned and I repeated was, they've asked you to do something so many times that they're tired of trying. Okay. Um, for some of you, this is somebody who is a little bit nagging is what I'm sensing. It's somebody that is like, do this, do that. Uh, there are conditions. There are like rules and conditions imposed upon you. And this is somebody that's like, they're never satisfied. They're always nagging. I see a really big nagging energy. And I feel like they could be somebody who is a little bit manipulative. They're a little bit manipulative. They know how to get you to do things by distorting the story, okay? Um, can you get me that? My stomach hurts and I can't walk all the way over there to just to fetch it myself. Can you get it for me, please? You know, like that. Playing on your weakness, playing on your kindness, or they're, they're manipulative. I have the High Priestess in the reverse and the Magician in the reverse. When these cards are in the reverse, it's manipulation using something to our advantage but not for a very good reason um, not for a good cause okay so it's it, you want to be a little bit careful I feel for some of you this could be family members unfortunately I feel like it could be family members somebody who's trying to get you to do something by distorting the truth or they're telling you like um, they're, they're telling you oh can you take my dog to the vet because um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sick, I'm in bed and I'm sick. I can't take my dog to the vet, can you help me? And then you find out that, you know, you took their dog to the vet and you said your goodbyes and you find out that, so let's say it was Saturday, Saturday they went to the movies. So I, I feel that you know who this is and you need to distance yourself. There might be some information coming to light about this person and their their deceptive behavior where they are opportunistic they're trying to tell you to do something and they're distorting the truth in order to get you to do things and then I'm also seeing as well um, you want to be careful when it comes to measurements and you want to be careful when it comes to not spilling things if you're cooking if you're serving things if you are mixing things blending things be very very careful so i feel like somebody is also and librans are, are typically very very organized and very neat but i feel like you might be dealing with someone who's a little bit on the sloppy end and you're trying to you know tell them to you know clean up your act or be less messy or you know learn to clean up after yourself learn to be a little bit more tidy be a little bit more organized 
and I'm also feeling as well. Um, some of you, there might have been a past person, somebody has left the picture, and um, you are burying yourself in work in order to forget, in order to distract yourself. You're also happy, I feel, with work, but you're, you're, you're burying yourself in work in order not to think about this person, in order to keep busy, in order not to go home and look around and be reminded of this person. So I feel like it's definitely, you know, a love relationship, okay? And then for many of you, you're, you're a little bit of a workaholic for the next two weeks, and there's nothing wrong with that because you're trying to get ahead in your career because you're trying to publish data and information um, because you might be trying to make uh, deadlines but I feel like there is a sense of like I need to I need to be productive I need to um, excel I need to produce something and if I keep you know working at it chugging away at it or plugging away at it um, produce something, produce written work, produce like results, produce statistics, produce a dissertation, produce like a master's thesis even, or like some type of an essay or something that is up for public scrutiny. If I keep producing, it's going to really enhance my professional image and my career and my prospects. So there is a big push for you as well to, you know, be a workaholic and to uh, challenge yourself and to do all the work that is necessary for you and to constantly like you know work overtime or do a lot of work even on the uh, during the holiday season and then others you know uh, trying to forget a situation a person from the past and you're overcoming it through burying yourself doing some type of a work I see like shutting yourself in your office uh, shutting yourself in your home trying to get things done okay to get things done so you're not distracted so you're not um, so you're that you're not so that you can forget things so you can tune people out um, I feel like for many of you you're rebuilding your wealth you're rebuilding your wealth so I feel almost like some people growing up with um, parents or in household grandparents or with parents who are extremely wealthy and I feel like you know they they passed it's it's almost like the environment was so stable and so full of abundance that that uh, things were taken for granted you know um, the 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 knowledge on how to accumulate wealth was never passed down it's it's like you had you either had like really really successful parents or grandparents and they knew how to make money work for them they didn't slave away they didn't have to work hard they're just very business or you know financially very savvy but the knowledge the ways to make money and to generate the money and to make the money work for you it was never passed down and I feel like you're at a point where you can definitely ask and they won't hide anything from you but I almost feel like you're trying to do it the hard way to generate wealth and you're reinventing the wheel when you could easily reach out and ask like how did you do that how did you accumulate you know um, so much so so much property when you at such a young age what is your secret what is your investment uh, secret so I, I feel like there is a conversation here about finances um, that can be had with you know people that are successful in your life without you having to do the legwork and to reinvent the wheel so it's like doing things the smart way rather than the hard way okay um, the past person from the, the the past person in the past excuse me I'm, I'm so scattered with your reading I'm so sorry uh, the person from your past there is a cycle that has closed out. Uh, somebody I feel is residing at a large distance or long distance. Somebody is residing far away. Somebody is, you know, transitioning into a new phase in their life. Somebody is, has left the picture, and I feel almost like. I see some of you reading, like rereading old text messages rereading old emails from this person 
looking at pictures of this person, but more so the, the contact, the communication, and yearning for this person. And um, I feel some of you might be in a position where, you know, it could be that one person that I mentioned before where they asked you so many times and they're, they've been turned down so many times and now they're embarrassed. And so you're wondering and, and, and you're wondering like, are they going to come back in? Are they going to ask me again? Right now I'm free and they're not coming back in. So reach out to that person. If somebody asks you twice or three times, they're definitely very, very, very interested. And, you know, time could lapse. Time could like elapse between, you know, the times that they asked you and the last time that you said no. But I feel like if somebody asked us to do something, right? two or three times you want to get coffee you want to get lunch you want to go for a walk there's definitely still interested in you and so reach out reach out for that communication don't bury yourself in work trying to forget don't be so caught up and wrapped up in things um where you might be ignoring you know offers and and people that are actually really really good for you okay people who are sincere with their feelings people who want to take care of you and people who have your best interests at heart okay so step away from a situation if you find yourself with like a creative block or like a mental block where you are not able to um, proceed with like some type of a writing project or you're not able to solve a specific problem step away from it maybe take up that offer for coffee maybe take up that offer for a walk and do those things to clear your mind so that you can come back and look at a situation with you know f a fresh pair of eyes okay so i hope the reading is helpful for you guys libras it is a pleasure to connect with you guys <clears throat> have a wonderful holiday season for those who celebrate, you know, the Christmas season and the New Year's. And I will see you guys in January. I wish you the very, very best. Take care.